can get started. I'll keep admitting people um, we're recording this. So everyone, you know, accepted already. And I'm actually going to turn this over to Quinn. Quinn is our moderator. She's going to introduce Monica and I'm going to let her take it from there. Quinn is our fabulous graduate student. I've known Quinn since she was a senior in high school and we're so happy she chose FDU. Mm -hmm. And I often tease Quinn runs our office, but Quinn really does run our office. <laughs> so without further ado, everyone, Quinn Javalosa. Thank you so much, Mary. I keep everyone in the office, you know, on schedule on the real mm -hmm. meetings. So my name is Quinn Havalosa. I am an accounting graduate student here at Fairleigh Dickinson Silverman College of Business. And I'm also like what Mary said, graduate um, assistant. Um, and I'm happy to be here with you guys. And it is an honor to be moderating Market Smith this evening. So I would like to introduce Monica Smith to everyone, especially Dr. EJ's class, the marketing class this evening. So Monica Smith is a mother of five children and has been married to her wife, Amy, for 25 years. And they actually reside in Chester, New Jersey, not far from here, on a property that they share with one of their established nonprofits, One More Smith. And it is a home to unwanted, neglected, and disabled animals. And today, Monica leads one of the largest women-owned agencies in the United States and a CEO of New Jersey's largest privately held performance marketing company, Market Smith Incorporated. She is a, also a five-time patent holder, a serial entrepreneur with over a half dozen business started, and the founder of Bring Dinner Home, a nonprofit dedicated to the support and aid of the students and their families attending Camden Street School in Newark. So Monica, one of my first questions that I would like to throw to you is, what inspired you to start your own business, particularly in this industry? And what was the previous experience that helped you in this endeavor? Well, first of all, I just wanna thank everybody uh, for the opportunity to be here. Um, this is a, uh, a great program. So it's, uh, it's nice to, to be with you all here. Um, and hopefully the next time we do it, we're all gonna be in the same room, right? So, um, but this, uh, you know, the question of how I started is um, an interesting one. You know, some people say, well, okay, how did you start? And I usually start by saying um, that, you know, I was fired from my job for uh, coming out. Um, and they say, well, you know, and they get caught up in that, which was in, um, you know, 1999. And, and back then, you know, uh, things were much different. I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about how things change and how important it is that change continues to occur. Some change is good and, and some change is, is more difficult, but dealing with change is a real critical part of being a leader. And so I'll, I'll talk about that a lot. But, you know, becoming an entrepreneur and, and starting my own business probably was started, you know, my, my dreams and my passions were always leading me to this moment. So I think that one of the other things that I think is important to know is, is that, or to think about is, you know, when you think about your life as you've been growing up and then going through school and how you're choosing classes, it's really important because there's a reason, there's a reason why are you choosing them because you're passionate about it or it, it might be a requirement, but lean into your passions. And really that's what I did. So. You know, when I think about um, my life, I've, I've followed uh, forward passion that's important to me and that I didn't want to deny. So when I started my own business um, in 1999, I started because I had done about 10 years of outside of college of different companies, and I got a great deal of experience there. I know what I loved and I know what I didn't like. And what was important to me was to follow the things that I really loved and the things that I liked um, over the things that I knew I was, didn't want to do, right? And so that's, so when I started my business, I started with that in mind. What kept me going, and I think that that's more important is that because it was difficult starting, it is extraordinarily difficult, difficult to start an agency or a business. 
And it's even more difficult back then to start as a woman. Today, it's, it's difficult too, but the good news is, is that about 50% of all businesses that are starting are start being around the world, uh, you know, are starting by women. So we're, we're making great progress there. But, for, you know, to get to the point is that for me, I think that uh, when I look at starting, I really wanted to create an agency that I would not, that I never had to go and get another job. And so it was really important for me to build something bigger than just a job description for myself. And so that's really what I did. And it took a long time to get there. It took probably the first three years of stumbling, 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 but Eventually, I got some traction, and then I found some momentum, and really, that's where I got to here today. That's awesome. That is also relevant now as students. We just have to get the momentum to, you know, know what we want, know what we don't want, like, dislikes in the workplace or the job that we want to find. Um, so the second question I would like to ask is, do you did you ever feel like you couldn't have a family relationship while working towards your goal? Well, I think for me, it's a little different um, in that the answer is no, no, no. And I think what's more important is the answer is, is that uh, what I want to say to all women is you can have it all. You might not be able to have it all at the moment you want it or all at the same time. But this idea of work-life balance is, is, is not, it's, it's a distraction. The idea is, is because you're saying that you have to choose. And what I'm saying is, is that what I've learned now, even with COVID, um, that being, having it, women can have it all. And it's more important, I think, one of the things that I think that I did sacrifice early on was not so much my relationship with my family, but with my friends, with my girlfriends that, you know, I have friends from grammar school and high school and college, I have deep, deep relationships. And I saw maybe they're going out and spending time together as more frivolous than I, and now I look back and I say, oh, I wish, I wish I didn't see that that way. That say, oh, that's because they can and I can't. That's just not true. So what I want to say to everybody is to really make sure that that you can do it. You can have it all. You can have a great family relationship. It takes a lot of work, your relationship, but if you have that support, you can spend time and be there for your children, and you can go out and do things for yourself. The other thing I do want to say to folks is, is that it's so important for women to take care of themselves at every step of the way, to see their doctors, to take that time to work out or, or do things that they're passionate about. And I, I, I really spend a lot of time coaching women to live their lives right now, no matter what their age is. I actually just said the same thing too, to one of the students. You know, you don't have to compare yourself to other students because it's your own race, it's your own journey, it's your own path. You just have to walk and own it as if it's your runway. So that's really, really good to hear that. Um, so the third question is, how do you think the landscape is changing for women in the business world? Because you said 1999. I was born 1998. So it's- how You have to rub it in right now? You, you gotta rub it in? <laughs> So I'm just thinking of what the changes I went through those years and how you've seen it sure. in your, yeah, your no, years. No, I, no, no, I think it's a, it's a fair question. And, um, you know, when I talk about the music that I, I like and listen to, um, my children often say, is he dead? And I'm like, no, no, he's not dead. He's, he was just, he was singing in the 80s and then we're still alive, the people that lived in the 80s, you know? <laughs> It's like, so that's funny, but um, the, the, what was the question? Cause I got lost in the, oh, the, on the business landscape piece. You know what I want to say to that? 
The first thing is before I talk to women, the business landscape has changed, period. That's important for everybody to realize. The most significant advancements and changes have occurred in the last few years. Um, and it's been a tectonic sh shift that's taken place between um, Me Too and Black Lives Matter and COVID and, and, and the part of COVID of, of the amount of loss people experienced, um, the, uh, the uh, stay in place orders, uh, homeschooling children while you're working, it is a massive shift. And so the business landscape has changed. For women, there obviously have been great strides forward in having women become, if you watch anything on the news, if you're doing anything on Bloomberg, um, the, the, the increase in diversity, women representation, um, a, a, a range of age, as well as, as, as people of color and, and, and great diversity is at an all time high. What we see is in, in for women is that um, their opportunities continue to grow and grow, and that momentum. You, there's no turning back. That there we're forward, um, and we are flooding the workforce. The challenge becomes, and the, the setback we've had for women um, in general in the workforce, which then leads to how do women get to positions of leadership and into the C-suite is uh, the childbearing years. But I do believe that COVID has demonstrated that women are significant multitaskers, have the ability to be home and have the ability to, to be uh, equal partners, if not, you know, doing more um, than their, their, in their, with their counterparts. So many you know, in the TMTs, which are the top mark, uh, the top um, management teams of, of the larger companies, you see that a lot of those women have moved up into the C-suite and are leading businesses forward in a very, very different way. Women can be able to be home and be great moms and simultaneously be great workers. That has been demonstrated that's not going to change, and we've and 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 because of Me Too, um, we we are now seen in ways that you know are seeing us as a more than just a gender, um, but uh, a a human life force that is existing. So, from a business perspective, everything has there a lot is changing, um, and. To be quite honest with you, and, and not to you know change the subject, but the business world will change soon again. It's changing now with the war between Ukraine and Russia that could escalate. Um, and the likelihood of involvement will change what we, we have not dealt with in, in decades and decades and decades here in the US. And um, it will be another significant change for leaders that have, will be exposed to that. So going through COVID um, allowed leaders to have to really change and adapt their leadership styles. Um, and I think that over the next three to five years to seven years, we're gonna see a significant change in the, the way that uh, companies look. And when you go onto websites, instead of saying all white faces, you are going to see the true colors of America and, the, and both genders and all ages represented too. And we could talk, I think also we should try to talk about, um, you know, age as well, because I think that that's another important subject that doesn't, kids are learning much faster in, in school through technology, their ability to, to rise above much faster than we have traditionally is also happening. That is so true. Uh, there will always be changes in life and we just have to adapt to it. Um, some of us adapt quickly, some of us take time, but it's, it's important to keep that in mind. And so my next question would be, what would you say is your overall philosophy for leading an organization? 
because as a leader to myself in you know school organizations that we have here um you have a, we have we all have a vision and we all have this passion inside us but what was your um background on that well what certainly what my my belief system is today is very different than when i started um today uh i lead and my i really demand of of those who who run with me and those are my teammates in the in the leadership group and those um in in, in positions of significance where they are overseeing um other individuals that they lead with clarity certainty and they are significant um um, they're, they're able to really tap into their coaching capabilities. Those are really important, right? So you, and, and, and they coach through using, uh, I think it's very important to be agile, open, um, and, and, and kind. And then at the end of the day, everybody should be smart. You know, if you're going to be leading forward, there's nothing worse than somebody that is not as smart you want the, the smartest people in the room always vying for the best uh, solution forward. But I think we smart is last, you know, open, agile, and kind are the, the leading qualities that I believe are important and how I lead. That actually ties to my next question, being agile, being kind, and all these qualities too have you lead this organization? What qualities, other than these qualities that you mentioned, what other qualities have made you successful in your career thus far? Uh, I think that um, when I think about what's made me successful, I think that being tenacious is really important. Um, and I'm not afraid of too much, but I think that, you know, I've learned that self-doubt is a really, you know, it really makes for uh, great challenges for people and, and for businesses. And so I try to, I try to eliminate as much of that self-doubt as possible. Um, and, and, and so I, in, in almost everything in my life, I believe I could do something way before I knew how to do it. And so then I have an expectation that everybody has to find that way forward for themselves, right? Like failure is not a big deal. It really isn't. I don't know. It, it, and we have to reverse that by, you know, we say, you know, the new way to say it is, is fail forward, right? Every single time I have in my life, with my kids, with my marriage, with the nonprofits, with the business, I've learned that nothing is a mistake. Everything has taught me something, like taught me, oh boy, I never want to do that again, right? I never want to do that again. And so, and so you don't repeat it. So I think that those are the things that are important to me is like, I don't like to repeat history. That makes me very successful, right? I don't need to, I've learned from others. Um, I like to be a good student. Being a really good student is really important. And then my final thing, which I've learned, you know, more recently from some of my um, newer and ads employees, teammates is I've, I've, I'm, a, I'm really good at trusting people and, and letting people take the wheel and go for it. And, um, and, you know, and what I've learned is, is if you hire the right people, just like if you surround yourself with the right friends, um, you, you trust them and you just want them to not only do well for you, but you want them to succeed. That is very important. You fail, you acknowledge that you failed and then you sit down think about why how and then you acknowledge that and then you move on and you don't repeat the same mistake again so you learn from it and it will really be instilled not just in your mind but also in your heart that I made that failure and I'm not going to do that again and 
also trust. It's hard to give out trust. It's hard to it's hard to gain trust. But when you do have that support system, it makes life easier and just smoother. Um, thank you so much, uh, Monica, for those wisdom that we do needed. We need to hear as students as well. Um, so my next question would be, what challenges did you face while going against the adversity of being a woman in the business industry? Well, I, I think that, you know, that's what, what adversities I faced and what adversities uh, others will face are, are wildly different now. Decades have, have gone by and times have changed. So I think it's more important you know, women have um, to really fight for their, their, you know, they have to be clear on their value. And I think people say that to women, but they don't really understand what that application means. And, and what it means is, is that knowing your worth is not a number. Knowing your worth is understanding that you are a vessel of a host of different things. And that in that vessel is your personal life, your professional life, your strengths, your weaknesses. And how, you know, understanding what it is it that you want and what you can um, and what you see as you want to achieve. And then how does that play out in the environment, uh, what you're paid and, and what you're, path is, 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 is really important. So I think that knowing today what I try to coach through women now, Market Smith, not only, are, you know, are we the, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure one of the largest, if not the, the, in the top five of the largest women run companies uh, for advertising in, in, in the country privately held, um, you know, we're 60% women. Our, our youngest individual is 21, our oldest is 75, and they're both women, you know, and we scale and, you know, in, in terms of, and, and we, we're about 35% diverse. So to me, part of, of, of what I'd like to tell folks is, is that I want everybody to live their best life right now. And that's part of their worth, right, is, is recognizing that, that I want them to bring their whole self to work. So if that's a cat running across the desk or a baby that's pulling at their hair, um, I want them not to worry about that. I don't want them to worry about it. I want them to bring their whole self because that's just a moment in time. And I think it's important that when we connect with all the things that are in our life and we recognize them, that we become more focused on the things that are that need to get done and we know how to prioritize. So when I was starting my business and, and what is true today, women facing um, anything that has to do mainly with finance, banking, so on and so forth, we face great, a, a greater level of bias, both conscious and unconscious and discrimination. And that's just the reality of it. it it's, it's still is a long, long, long way to go. And for me, that has been a challenge and on, the, on the institutional side. But I will tell you, one of my, you know, and I know that you're going to ask this question of one of my proudest moments, and I've got a few of them, but one of my proudest moments at that point was that I was able, you know, hearing all these different types of horror stories, I, I, did, I did start a tech company. And I raised um, millions and, and I was told that it was going to be extraordinarily difficult or impossible. And I, I, I asked, you know, I went out and I, I asked five people, not 25, five, and all five said yes. And I signed up three of the five and made the amount of money that I needed to do. That was a really proud moment for me. So things are possible, but on the institutional side for women, um, when it comes to challenges, finance uh, and, and getting the backing you need is difficult. In business today, women, I think it's important that companies recognize that women need to be equal pay, 
and they also and women need to make sure that they demand that and their worth is also um, I was just literally on a, a on a call where somebody a very 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 high level person was telling me she was asked to go get coffee when there were two other guys there and they share an office and um, and and she did it and I just said the answer to that is no unless you're getting me coffee tomorrow, <laughs> right? I mean, that's just the reality. You don't get coffee every day. You, that's, not, that's not the way it works anyway. So it's those kinds of things where we sit there and say, oh, let me pass on that. I'll, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal because it chips away at the foundation of, of equality. That is correct. You have to know yourself so that you'll know your value, especially going to the workforce and, you know, what you don't need to do. So um, that is really, really important. And also your proudest moments. It makes us proud too, just hearing about it. Um, what do you wish you knew earlier in your journey to becoming a CEO? I know you have so many experiences, so many challenges, so many um, setbacks, but what did you wish you knew earlier than that? I think that I wish I knew to enjoy the ride more, period. You know, I just, I worked so hard, so long. Um, I missed so much early on. Uh, and I, I, I should have just said, this is, you know, every step is amazing. So you gotta be really present and, and just realize that you don't know what tomorrow brings. And I was fortunate that tomorrow brought another tomorrow and I was, I was lucky, but it really it's only over the last few years that I've gotten to a place of extraordinary joy and really loving what I do to a, a place where, you know, I wish I had done that for years now. make every moment count be be present be attentive just enjoy the ride um and always be thankful as well you know that that happened to you for a reason so that's really good that students you need to take a note of that because you know in college you will it will seem like it's yesterday that you just got here but tomorrow you'll be graduating so make sure that you make, you know, you make every minute count in the classroom and outside the classroom. Um, thank you for that. Uh, next question would be, what advice would you give to the next generation of female leaders and what was your inspiration or why? Well, I think that I've, I've given, you know, I think that for female leaders, I'd say, you know, just go back and say, you can have it all. There's nothing stopping you. Do anything and everything you want. And let's just say to females and, and to leaders in, in general, but I think that, you know, nothing, the reality is, is life has, has, has changed as we know it. And it's up to every individual woman to step forward and to live her best life without fear and without worry. Now, that's a, you say, well, how, how do you do that? Because I have, just do it and, and, and it's unnatural, right? Because that's not the, um, the tapes that we play, but we should live, you know, I think to myself, and it's funny, right? That I can say that, you know, I've been, you know, with my wife and it, you know, we, we are, celebrated it's beautiful and our family is 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 welcomed everywhere and it's nice it's it's beautiful but the reality is 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 that if we didn't take that risk years ago we wouldn't be here today and so to me i just say boy everybody do what you without I mean as long as it's not hurting anybody but but living your very very best life means taking the risks even if you feel that somebody's sitting there saying you can't you shouldn't that's too risky what about me uh you know aren't you supposed to take care of your parents the the, the reality is is that 
um, I tell everybody to, to really go for it, really go for it. And even if you fail, you fail at a business, you fail at getting the promotion. Okay. You, you, you went to go, you know, you didn't finish the marathon. Uh, your kid got a B in seven A. You know what? There's another at bat tomorrow. Try again. Don't worry. It's an at bat for other people. And there's an at bat for you. So just keep on pushing forward. The more at bats you have, the better everything is. That's what I say. It, you also reminded me of how when you mentioned about, you know, people saying you shouldn't do that or you can't do that. It's like going into an interview and you didn't get a job. The more no's, there will be a yes. And that yes will be the greatest opportunity that will be offered to you. And you say yes, then. So those no's will lead up to a big yes that will lead you to a very happy, successful life. Um, and it's it's just I'm I'm starstruck <laughs> and just in awe because those are words or those are wisdoms that you know I my friends and I for sure will needs to hear now um, being a graduate student. So I have another question for you. You mentioned earlier about how you wish this or how you wish that. Do you consider those as regrets? Um. Do I think them as regrets? Um, I'd love to tell you that I don't have regrets, but obviously I, I do, right? I'm human and I do. I mean, there's just no other way around it. But I, I really have, like, I, nothing holds me back. Nothing, I don't live in the past. I don't sit there and say, oh, I, I can't move forward because I did that. I mean, I just, I fumble forward, I run forward, I leap forward, I skip forward, I go backwards so that I can come forward again. Parenting has taught me that more so than anything else. Um, so I think that, that no, I, I, clearly I have, I wish, ooh, I wish I didn't do that. You know, um, I have, I have, you know, raised millions of dollars and I've blown millions of dollars. I wish I didn't do that. You know, <laughs> you know, I've, I've started businesses where I, I trusted other people and instead of like leaning into myself that I wish I didn't do that. But on the other side of it is it's never going to happen twice, right? It's never going to happen twice, but I've hired, I've hired people too, that I sat there and said, I looked at their resume they look so good on paper. And then, you know, the application, but that's not their fault, right? That's me sitting there saying, I just, I just want to, okay, throw money at it. Or I just want to hire somebody or, or, um, you know, like when you, I, I have a really great example of, I've, I've, I've got it. My younger daughter, uh, ha, my youngest daughter has a processing issue and she has a hard time like processing information. She is a very talented uh, athlete. And so instead of, you know, what I was doing was putting more pressure on her. She wasn't, and instead of just letting her be, uh, I was putting pressure, say, uh, and she was getting more upset on the field and so on and so forth. You know, when I just realized that everything is just, just have fun, she excelled, she's excited. It was, you know, so when I talk about, people that have let me down it, I've really it was me because I was the leader I'm fully responsible for that so I don't I, I regret that something might have happened in its totality but I go into every one of those big things and I try to pull apart what could I do differently moving forward and that's constant I'm just constantly doing that and that doesn't and so then I don't feel like, oh, I'm holding on to regret. So I'm not holding on to it, um, but I'm definitely learning from it. And I really recommend everybody kind of let their stuff go, but also try not to repeat it again. That is so true. That is the same perspective. And that's the same thing that I do. You know, in, in four years in college, you want to do this, you want to do that, but then do you really have the time? Do you really have the opportunity to do so and then you're in senior oh I didn't get to do that I'm about to graduate I'm about to leave college life uh that's 
things, but you just have to, it happened for a reason. You didn't have time, you made sacrifices, so you couldn't do it. So you just have to move on and jump over the fence, graduate, and then make new decisions for new opportunities. Um, so any questions from our students in the mansion? I have a question. <laughs> All right, Ms. Lee. Thank you. Um, I, it's a twofold question. Um, so I'm curious what made you take the leap from, you know, working for other people to starting your own business because, you know, you've mentioned aside from being a woman in business during that time it was very difficult. Um, you know, I can imagine, especially uh, with what you do, um, you know, finding clients and everything that could be really challenging in itself. So what made you take that leap and were you nervous about succeeding? I know you're talking about taking risk. So um, it's, a good, it's a really good question. And I wanna tell you that um, I took that risk, uh, Missy, because I was tired of letting, what I felt like letting other people down. Like it just felt like in my unhappiness at what I was doing, trying to find my way forward, I was always trying to give my best but it just seemed like it was never a good fit. Like it just felt like, I, even though I was celebrated and I, you know, I had really good bosses who really, even today I, I get to see them and inside of me, I was just uncomfortable. And I just, I can't imagine being uncomfortable at work every day. It just seems like, boy, oh boy, that's miserable. And so that's really what pushed me is that I didn't want to live a lie. I didn't want to have to tell people that I wasn't married to a woman. And I wasn't married at the time because it wasn't even legal at that point. Um, but I didn't want to have to lie or, 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 or omit. And I also, uh, you know, am learning disabled. And so, you know, I struggle. Uh, I had to self-teach myself. I had to self-taught myself how to read in college. I, my grammar, it's been a, a, you know, really a 30 year journey of trying to uh, get to um, being able to complete sentences correctly. And, and, you know, there was a lot of shame. And so once I faced that, I want, I didn't want to have, have, be afraid anymore. And I didn't want to be uh, ashamed. Um, I really realized that the only way to do that is to try to make my way forward in my own company, living with my rules and regulations and, and, trying, to, and trying to get people to, you know, um, understand and appreciate that I didn't, I didn't have to bring my life forward to them, but I also didn't have to hide it. And, and my family is a very big part of our agency world. And there are so many people that help me with my disability. And to be quite honest with you, our, I, I think at least 15%, if not 20% of our workforce is neurodiverse. Mm -hmm. And so we welcome, you know, e e folks that, that are, uh, you know, have challenges. It's a, a welcomed uh, symphony uh, in, our, in our business world. And I just, to be honest with you, I love it. I, I, I love that you don't have, you it's Baskin Robbins in, in, in Market Smith. And so, you know, it's, you could find some, uh, you know, something for everybody there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was supposed to ask another question, but I just lost it. <laughs> but does anyone have a question? The students in the classroom? No. All right. I have I have a question. Quinn, can I ask a question? Okay. Um, this is awesome, and I am I am giddy with everything you're saying. But I have a question about like your business. Yep. Do you like? Is there a specific category that you focus on, or specific um, clients that you really want to work with, and how does that work within your organization? So, so our business model, um, thank you, Paige, for that question. Um, our business model is, is broken up uh, between national um, clients and 
uh, local clients. So the state of New Jersey is one of our, our big clients and, uh, you know, Blue Mercury and, and, and uh, Shark Ninja products. So, you know, Brother Printers. So we have a host of, we, you know, we're at the specialty in retail. Our big business um, focus is direct to consumer, building out way brands connect with their uh, consumers and how do you do that in a cost-effective way. Um, uh, but we also do, uh, we're, we're one of the largest consumers of media in the state of New Jersey. And so New Jersey lottery and things of that nature were. So our business model has been um, traditionally, I think our entire business model um, has been word of mouth. We, we do not have a sales force. And so uh, we've been in business 23 years. Uh, and for the exception of uh, three of those years, we've grown uh, every year. So it's, uh, it's all been through word of mouth. That's awesome. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, Dr. EJ. So I'm Dr. Dem I'm sorry, the Demoda. But anyway, um, I, so this is a marketing class. And I'm just wondering um, if you can share uh, the example of your successful marketing campaign you have done in the past. Yep. Sure, sure. So I think that um, we, we have a couple of different ones, but let me, let me bring um, one to the, the table for you. So we have a client uh, called Shark Ninja and they, pre they present, um, they make uh, well over 50 different types of houseware uh, appliances. When Shark first started, we, uh, it was a, a vacuum cleaner that was, the vacuum cleaner market was highly saturated with different brands that had been around uh, for decades and decades, household brands, as well as Dyson, which was um, the number one global um, vacuum at the time. Now you sit there and say, okay, well, what, what, what does it matter? Well, it's a multi-billion dollar business model. And at the time when we took this client on, they were only about $250 million. Uh, today, they are approaching $4 billion. So, and that is in a, a 10 year span. So the way that that was approached was that we used different types of TV lengths in marketing um, that you have available in, in media. Most agents, most uh, brands were using 30 second spots. We would buy longer airtime um, to provide a longer, uh, uh, a, a, a greater format, a longer format, so that consumers would be able to understand the comparison between a, a shark vacuum and a Dyson. And then we brought, we, we brought the cost down to a um, slightly lower than what the Dyson was charging. So we went head to head against Dyson. And that became one of the greatest rivalries. And it took us uh, about four years to overtake Dyson as the number one global brand. But we did that through multi-length um, media, um, through television, and then through digital. And um, that is a, a, one of a, a really great success story that is probably the number one houseware uh, success story uh, over the last uh, two decades. That is awesome. That is really a success. Um, I do have another question. Um, in your bio, you mentioned about be having nonprofits. What made you decide to extend your resources from Market Smith to those nonprofits? Well, it goes back to one of the questions that I answered earlier of what's important is living um, your best full life now. And I, most folks, um, end up having to do the work that they want to do um, for charity and, and giving back at the end of their life or at the end of their careers. And I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to make an impact. It was really, really important to me to make an impact now, um, earlier in my life. I wanted to do that. And um, 
the reason why we got into the animal sanctuary was not most folks is like, uh, for the love of animals. It actually, you know, yes, yeah, so my wife and I do love animals and we have a, I think we have 65 some animals on our, uh, at, at this, uh, on our sanctuary of which our kids help us take care of. Um, but we actually got into the actual nonprofit part of it because we saw that so many women uh, were losing their homes um, in 2008 after the financial crisis uh, for taking care. They just could not afford, they, they had taken in so many animals and they couldn't afford to feed them. And when the crash came, uh, those uh, women were really left um, hungry. We wanted to help solve that for women. And so that's really why we started the nonprofit in, in a way to be an outlet to help women who had really on their own for years tried to support these animals as best they could. So we've grown and evolved from there and have, you know, but the, the key to both um, Bring Dinner Home and One More Smith and all of the other things that we do is that you can't take the money with you and you can't take your, you know, your time, talent and treasure with you. So the best thing is, I believe is to live this life with your hands open and um, to be able to share the gifts that you, that I, at least I have been given. And to be honest with you, I love it. I love doing it. I, I, I think that I'm fulfilled and it gives me another perspective and it's hard. Uh, and, but I, I, I absolutely feel like I'm living my full life. It gives you another purpose too, which is the giving back. Uh, that's a really great point. Yeah. Giving back to the community. And I feel like you really shared to us tonight, the purposes that you've had throughout your life and throughout the years of Market Smith. And we are, I'm learning so much tonight. So thank you so much. Um, we have one more question. Yeah. Hello. Um, Hi, I, how are you doing? Thank you. I really admire everything you're doing. I really love what you stand for. And I'm a small business owner myself. I'm working on scaling my brand. And my question for you is, how do you manage your time? How do you stay on top of everything, not spread yourself too thin and avoid burning yourself out? That's a good question. And I think that the best way you can do that is first is you have to have a priorities and you have to be uh, organized, have priorities, and then make sure that you don't spend overwhelming amounts of time on the wrong priorities, okay. right? So you also have to recognize what your strengths are. And sometimes you also have to know when you need to get assistance, right? To make sure that you're thinking about something the right way. So what I would do is, is really make sure that you think about how you're feeling. And um, if you're getting worried, you're feeling physically drained or any of those things, you're probably doing something wrong, right? So you probably want to take a reset and, and, and just say, okay, this is what I've been doing for the last few days or few weeks or few months. I haven't really moved the needle or I haven't, or I don't feel great try to make adjustments, just keep adjusting, keep adjusting and keep adjusting. And what you wanna do is ultimately find momentum and you wanna be able to land on where you are getting traction. You want momentum to go to traction and, and that's where you start to really feel success. Okay, that was a really good answer. Thank you. That right You're there. welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, I appreciate it. As a follow-up to your answer, Monica, um, how do you how do you reset yourself? You know, what do you do to set back, just you know, think through things and relax when you're drained out? Okay, well, the first, what I used to do, I don't recommend anymore. I, 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 you know, you know, I, I, I do like to 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 party like a rock star, so I try not to. <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's, it's, you could tell which kids are, are going to be on their phone or the ones that didn't think that was funny, but, but I think that, you know, the bottom line is, is that uh, you learn over time, but, you know, being, being um, today, taking time, everybody should take time for themselves before they start the day. 
that everybody should do that, you know, even 15 minutes to take a time just to quiet your mind. But, you know, it's important to get out and be physically active. It's important to talk to other people and it's important to see other things. Um, I, I find it, especially for marketing, it's important for me to see what's happening um, in trends uh, at museums, in fashion, what's happening uh, in music. All of these things are very, very important, uh, especially because they not only give you, um, you know, they, they, it's, it's, it's interesting, but to understand what's happening and to be in front of it. So you really want to be able to be quiet and take care of things and not in constant motion so that you can see what's really in front of you and how do you get there. That is true. That is also very important. That concept is very important when studying. So midterms are done. You know, you have to set up your time, take care of yourself and get ready for finals. So that's really, really important. Um, any other questions from the class? Students? No? Mary? Monica, you're amazing. You are so inspirational. I love it. Really, really terrific. And I look forward to when um, you can come to campus and give a live talk, but this was just absolutely amazing. And, and Quinn, you are a great moderator. So professional. You were fabulous. So this was all just so wonderful.